11, the Bible says this. <clears throat> then said the woman, of course, he's gone to the witch at Endor, the woman, the woman with a familiar spirit, and has asked her to, um, to divine by that familiar spirit and bring up whom he will. And verse 11, it said, The woman whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending and out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up. He is covered with a mantle, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And, of course, the last message that we preached out of here was the dangers of following a man and not following God. And that's been Saul's hang-up the whole time that he's followed Samuel and he's leaned on Samuel's relationship to God and he never developed his own relationship to God. And we saw that last Sunday morning, the dangers of that. And that is why it's so important, parents, that we teach our children how to walk with God and how to love God because when you and I are out of the equation and they have to make decisions on their own, we hope and we pray against everything that's in us that they're going to follow God and love God. They can't lean on mom and dad's relationship with God. You can't lean on your pastor's relationship with God. You've got to have your own walk with God. And we saw that last time. And this is, of course, Saul's problem is that he, he can't get through to God. He said, God won't listen to me. God won't answer me. And so he has to go the way of sin to try to get an answer from a man who's already dead. Verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee, and has become thine enemy? That's a pretty strong word, 17. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. And the Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth, and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. Now, Brother Jim mentioned something this morning. He and I have talked about this before, and, and I agree with what he said. And he was talking about the hurdle theory. Maybe that's his own, is that your own wording? All right, that's fine. And uh, what he was saying was this in Sunday school. He was saying this. He was saying, you're going, you're going along in your Christmas, Christian life, Christmas life, Christian life, and God's going to drop a hurdle in front of you and me. And what that is, a test, it's a trial, it's a situation that we're going to have a decision to make. Either we're going to have to get on our face before God to get over that thing, or we can turn to the right, or we can turn to the left, or we can turn and go back. And I'm going to say this tonight before I even pray, before I even get started. Listen, if you want to live a life in sin, God will let you. Did you hear what I said? That, that should wake us up tonight. I think so many of us think, well, God's not going to let me do that. No, if you want to do that, he'll sit back and watch you do that. So we've got to be real careful. And tonight, we're going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to title the message this, Picking Up Where You Left Off. And it has exactly to do with what Brother Jim was talking about this morning. And, and here's the situation, here's what's going on. Saul in chapter 15 disobeyed God. He did not execute the judgment that God wanted executed upon Amalek. And so God at that point took the kingdom away from Saul and gave it to David and started judging Saul and started bringing trials and persecutions upon him in his life to get Saul to turn back to God. And Saul's heart never repented of those sins. And so what I want you to understand is this tonight. When Samuel came up, and he and Saul bows himself before that perception of Samuel. The thing that was told to Saul was the exact same thing in chapter 15. Samuel basically was saying, Saul, you haven't dealt with the issue of Amalek 
And so now you're heaping damnation to yourself. And for you and I, as we go along in this Christian life, listen, there may be something that comes up in your life, a situation, a problem. Maybe it's a sin that besets you, whatever it might be, whatever it might be in my life, whatever it is. If we're going along in this Christian life and something stops us from serving God and we turn to the left or we turn to the right or we turn and backslide and go back, God's going to let us do that because it's our choice. But he'll always be sitting at that point where we deviated from the straight and narrow path. And if you and I want to come back and continue on for God, we got to deal with that thing first. Saul, Saul could have been right with God. But he had to deal with the disobedience concerning Amalek first. Saul tried to do all these things to make himself happy. He tried to kill David to make himself happy. He tried to do all these things within his power, and he could not get an answer from God. He could not move on in his life with God. And so he goes further and further and further into sin, and he finally is at, is at a witch's house in Endor, on the ground, on his face, before a perception of Samuel and the very words from 13 chapters previous were said to him. He had never made things right concerning chapter 15's disobedience. And the same will be true in my life and in your life. If we leave off with God, we can come back and try to get back on track, but we're going to have to pick up where we left off. We can't skirt that issue. We can't skirt that sin. We can't skirt that problem. We've got to pick up where we left off. So let's pray tonight and we'll get, we'll get started. Lord, you've been really good to us. And we thank you for that. I want to pray that folks... Tonight, Lord, we'll be attentive to your word, that we would understand this very valuable lesson in the Bible. We thank you for putting it out there for us, for it to be an example to us. And Lord, we just ask that our hearts be receptive tonight. Lord, you'll bless those that, that aren't with us, or we pray and certainly miss them. Just pray you bless them, and Lord, bring them back to us. And Lord, we just pray that tonight, now you'll help us to focus on this. Lord, help us to believe the Bible. And Lord, you've given us this example of Saul. I pray that we take it to heart and not make the same mistakes. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, as I said, since chapter 15, really Saul's life has, has been a complete miserable mess. And the same will be true for you and I. If we get off the path that God has for us to walk, there's going to be some misery. There's going to be some chastisement. There's going to be a mess. And, and I'm not saying everybody that's going through a problem is out of God's will. But I am saying this, you know whether you're in God's will or not. Tonight, as you sit at Spring City Baptist Church, you ought to ask yourself, am I in God's will? Am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I where God wants me to be? And if the question, if the answer to that is no, fix it. Change it. Whatever it is. But whatever it is that got you off the path of God's will, we've got to come right back to that point before we can move forward with him. Saul was a uh, man that disobeyed God. Saul was a man that would not repent. He was proud. We learned in chapter 23 that he was dabbling in witchcraft himself, even though he had put it out of the kingdom, supposedly. We see that he's a selfish man. We see that he's a, a murderous man. He has murder and hatred in his heart, trying to kill David. And you know, we say this in, the, in these schools, and it's true. You know, the kids that, that act up the most are the ones that are the most troubled, aren't they? The kids that act up the most are the ones that are looking for the most attention. And I think this was Saul. The next time we, we preach out of Ecclesiastes, we're going to talk about childish behavior. That's exactly what this man was doing. He was having temper tantrums. He was, he was selfish. He was... Uh, playing the victim. He was acting like his life's the one that's been torn upside down. But it's all everybody else's fault when it's his fault. He's his worst enemy. Saul is a man that's scared. So how do you know? Well, if you look back at chapter 28 there in uh, verse, <clears throat> what is it, verse 4. It says the Philistines gathered together. Right, verse 5. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was what? You know, we do a lot of stupid things when we're afraid, don't we? Sorry, foolish things when we're afraid. I'm not supposed to be using that word. 
do a lot of foolish things when we're afraid, don't we? When, when we can't see the next step in our Christian life, when we don't know the answer to this problem, when, when I can't figure out how to get around this hurdle, if you will, that God's dropped in my life, we, we, we have this flight mechanism in us and we, we pull back from God and we push away the things of God and of church and we say, you know what, I just need some distance. I need to figure out what's going on in my life and when I get it all figured out, I'll come back to God. And that's the exact opposite response we ought to have. We ought to draw closer to God and say, oh God, would you help me? Did anybody run track in here in high school? Brother Mark, did you? you were a hurdle or two, weren't you? No. What'd you do? Distance. That's hard to believe. No, anyway. Right. If you've ever if you've ever run hurdles, those things are tall. Right? And instead of pushing away from the hurdles that come up in our spiritual life, I, I'm telling you, we ought to get on our face before God and grab a hold of the bottom of those things. And say, God, I am not leaving here until I get some help from you. But Saul pushed away. Saul fled. He was alone. He was scared. He was troubled. And this is true to God's form. Verse chapter 28, verses 4 and 5. God brings a trial into his life. Here's the threat of war from the Philistines again. And God's bringing this into his life to see whether or not he's going to repent and turn back to God. It's a test. And Saul fails miserably. Because instead of running to God and trying to get things right with God, he runs to sin. He runs to the demonic world of spiritism. And he gets an answer, but it's an answer that condemns him. And the same will be true in my life and your life. We, we have a problem in our life. It's not time to run to the world. The world can't help you with a spiritual problem. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, those things are not of God. That's all that's there. That's not going to help in a spiritual trial. It's not going to help in a spiritual problem. The only thing that's going to help is God and His Word. Oh, may we run to Him. But Saul goes to the witch. Because God will not answer him. I bet Saul felt justified in doing that. I bet if, if they're, I mean, the witch herself said, you're Saul, I'm, you're not supposed to be here. And he said, nothing's going to happen to you. I bet if, if some of those servants of Saul's, maybe even Jonathan, I don't know, if they'd, if they'd come to him and said, Saul, what, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing that? Aren't those supposed to be put away out of the land? You know what I think you would have said? He would have said this. Yeah, but God won't answer me. What am I supposed to do? We can justify a lot of sin, can't we? We're good at that. Well, things didn't go the way I wanted to. So, so God, because you didn't answer my prayer. Because God, this didn't go the way I wanted it to go. I'm going to go do this. And we think somewhere in the back of our crazy mind and our psyche, we think that we're justified in committing that sin, and we're not. We're we're, we're making ourselves twice as guilty. Because just because God doesn't answer us doesn't mean He's against us. It may be the best thing for us that He doesn't answer us right away. We've got to understand that. Saul goes to the witch. God won't answer him because iniquity is regarded in his heart. If we look there in verse 11... Verse 11 down through verse 14. I'm not, for a second time, I'm not going to reread that. But what happens is this woman with a familiar spirit, and by the way, that word familiar, if you look it up in the 1828 dictionary, means demonic or evil. Never a good thing to be messing around with that. The woman with a familiar spirit divines, and Samuel is brought before Saul. That word divine means foretelling, listen, future events by spiritual means. It would be like reading your horoscope. Or going to a, a, a fortune teller, have your cards put out and see if you're going to win the mega jackpot, powerball, million, billion dollar lottery. That, that's basically what he was doing. And what he was doing was this. He was going to this witch because he couldn't get an answer from God about what to do with the Philistines. And so he goes to this witch and he says, look, I need you to bring me up saying, I need, you, I need you to divine by the familiar spirit. I need you to be able to help me tell the future by a demonic spirit. 
Isn't that some power that they could do that? That's some serious power. You've been reading your Bibles uh, every day. You, you, you're starting to come across where uh, Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh. And the first thing they do is put that rod down there and it turns into a serpent. And you know what the Bible says? It says the magicians of Egypt did the same thing. That's some power, man. That's some evil power. And then the next thing they do, they turn the water into blood. And the magicians do the exact same thing. And I think there's, there's one more coming up. I can't remember what it is. I didn't get that far. What is it? The frogs. And the magicians do the exact same thing. And I know it, it's, it's the first three that do the same thing. But when number four hits, they can't do that one. We find out God's bigger and better. Hey, that's a good study if anybody wants to do that. But all I'm saying is this. There's some serious power Evil power being demonstrated here. And all Saul's wanting, he's wanting this. He doesn't care about his past sins. He doesn't care about how he's treated David. He doesn't care that he, is, he has violated God's word directly in allowing a witch to live. And he has gone and he has asked her to help him. He doesn't care about any of that. He just says, I need to know what to do about the Philistines. <laughs> and, and boy, isn't that a picture of people today? If you could just tell me the winning numbers of the 1.5 billion Powerball lottery, I would be happy. Never mind the sin that's in your life. Never mind that you're not in church. Never mind that you're not saved. Can you just tell me what the winning numbers for the lottery are and I'll be happy? That's where we're at today, folks. Saul cared more about the immediate than he did about the eternal. Number verse 15, he says this. Saul answered, said, I'm sore distressed. The Philistines make war against me. Look, and God has departed from me and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. And the answer that comes from God has nothing to do with the Philistines. The answer that comes from Samuel has nothing to do with the Philistines. He says, you need to go deal with the sin in your life. There's a good chance when a hurdle comes up in our life, we need to deal with the sin in our life. It has nothing to do with what the next step is. It probably has to do with the step back there that we need to go fix. Saul had always leaned on Samuel's walk with God, never developed his own. Saul was only concerned about the present distress and escaping the Philistines. Listen, listen, he was not concerned with why God brought that distress upon him. He could care less. Probably the uh, best advice that, uh, that Brent Logan ever gave me was this. He gave me a lot of good advice, but this best advice he ever gave me. He said this. He said, he said, Nathan, he said, when you have a big decision in life, he said, you've got a problem, you've got an issue, you've got a situation, or you have a big decision. He said, the very first thing you've got to do is get clean before God. He said, it doesn't matter what you're doing in the ministry. It doesn't matter what you're doing serving God. He said, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter any of that. He said, you've got to get before God and you've got to get clean. And he said this, he said, he said, when he's had big decisions, he'd probably kill him for saying this. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> he said, when you have big decisions in life, he, when, he, when he said, when I had a big decision, he said this, he said, he said, I get on my face and I confess my sins. He said, I confess my wife's sins. And my daughter sins, and my son, and my dog, and, and the people in my t- He said, I just get it all out. Get any possibility of any iniquity hindering the, the relationship with God. He said, get it all out. That's good advice. That's good advice. And whenever a problem comes up in our life, a hurdle comes up, if you will, a situation, a trial, whatever it is, We ought to get on our face before God and examine our own hearts and say, Lord, try my heart, search my heart, try my reins, judge me, O God, see if there be any wicked way in me before we ever ask for any help. Saul never did that. He wanted the answer, he wanted the help, he wanted the direction, but he was not willing to get on his face before God and say, Lord, would you forgive me for something as simple as disobedience? Never once.
Get clean. I'm telling you, get clean. Need direction or you feel God's against you, get clean. You know, maybe I, I don't know everybody's life tonight. Maybe your life's off track. Spiritually with God. Maybe you feel like, Pastor, I, can, I just can't, I can't move forward. I can't, I can't get over something. I can't get past something. I can't move on with God. You know, the things of God to Saul, when his heart was turned away like that, they stunk to him. The things of God to Saul, when his heart was turned away from God, were boring. Think about Solomon. When his heart turned away and all those wives turned his heart away from God, the things of God just had a stench to them. Uh, come on, you know somebody... Everybody in this, in this church has somebody in their life that's turned away from God, and every time you try to bring it up to them, they just, ugh, don't talk to me about that. A good indicator that there's a problem, that you're off track, that you're not on the right track in your life with God is that you can't stand coming to church. You can't stand listening to preaching, whether it's mine or anybody else's. You don't want to hear the songs of God. You don't want to hear the songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. You don't want to talk to anybody that's a born-again Christian. Just sort of distance ourselves. It's a good indicator. Maybe your life's off track. Maybe you're wayward. Maybe you're backslidden. I'll tell you this. If you ever decide to get back on track, you're going to have to go back to the point where you got off and deal with that situation. It could be sin. It could be a disagreement with a brother or sister in Christ. It could be an issue of pride in your heart. It could be a number of things. It could be that you got offended at something someone said or did in the church. It could be a number of things. But if you ever decide to get back on track with God, you got to go back to that point and you got to make that right before the Lord's going to ever let you get over that hurdle and go on for Him. Chapter 28, verse 15. Let's go ahead and jump down there. Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Of course, in the rest of the verse, Saul answered, I'm distressed. Philistines are against him. Wants to know what to do. Verse 16. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee and has become thine enemy? What an What an answer. He says, why, why do you want to hear from me? <laughs> Your beef's not with me. You know, I, I'm not going to tell you anything different than what I told you in chapter 15, Saul. Your issue is with God. And it's, it's interesting, verse 17, the, the person, the tense of the, of the narrative changes. Verse 16, it says, Samuel, wherefore thou didst thou ask of me... Seeing the Lord has departed from thee. So he's, he's talking right to Saul. Now look at verse 17. Look what happens. And the Lord hath done to him. It's almost like the witch and the servants are here. And it's almost like Samuel's turning to them and saying, The Lord's done to this guy what I told him was going to happen to him. See that? Look, the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he's telling everybody else around him what's going on. Then it goes back to the first person. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. That's curious. Verse 18, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Now, verse 19, things get more serious. Because Samuel not only tells him what the problem is, he now is pronouncing sentence upon him and judgment upon him because of the sin in his life. Verse 19, moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. And listen, that prophecy comes true. But what we learn out of these messages, out of these verses is this. Things are only going to get worse if we don't make things right with God. The further we go harboring sin in our life, the worse it's going to get. The further we go harboring sin in our life, 
the more miserable we're going to be. The further we go not dealing with the thing that got us off the path of righteousness and truth with God, the further we go trying to just make things look like they're okay and put a smile on our face and come to church and shake hands and say, I love you, brother, I love you, it's good to see you, and go home and just be depressed and miserable and absolutely just a mess. The further we go in that situation, the worse it's going to get. We've got to get back to the point where we left off and pick up where we left off. Verse 20. This is curious. Then Saul fell straightway all along the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel on the watch. There was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day nor all the night. It's curious to me that Saul would fast before he goes to see a witch, but he won't fast before God. That he'll fast and afflict his flesh to go hear from Samuel, but he won't do that to hear from God. That shows you where the man's heart was. And the same will be true in my life and your life if Jesus Christ and God Almighty is not the source of our hope and the source of our help. We're going to try to go to everything else. And we're going to go through all the, all the religious rituals. <laughs> you can sit down and try to read your Bible. It'll be boring. You can sit there and try to listen to preaching. You'll not get anything out of it. You'll sit there and listen to the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And you'll think, oh, I'm tired of these things. Until you get back to the point where you left off. It'll be miserable. It's only going to get worse. So that's my message. That's real cheerful, wasn't it? So now the burning question. Was this really Samuel? And I'm going to give you one word answer. I believe yes. And I know the question comes up. Well, why would God allow a witch to bring up Samuel out of paradise? Right, it's where the Old Testament saints went. Right, out of paradise. Why would God allow that? Well, let's just look at, at what's going on here, okay? We know that the Old Testament saints are in paradise, which is in the heart of the earth. If you look at verse 13, that's just going to be a Bible study thing now, okay? Look at verse 13. It says, uh, middle of the verse, And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending from where? Okay? So little g, right? Little g gods. Ascending out of the earth, all right? Now, verse 15. You believe your Bible is the word of God. You believe you take it literally. Okay, verse 15, and who said? <laughs> really, that's all you need. Okay, Samuel said. All right, so verse, verse 15, no, verse 16, then said who? All right, so, all right, you see what I'm saying. I believe it's also Samuel because the message, and I've said this already tonight, the message that he gave him was the same message of chapter 15. I also believe it's Samuel because the prophecy of verse 19 comes true. But this is, this is probably the, the one that kicked it for me. Verse 18. As he's telling him this, Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Now watch, watch, watch the end of, the verse, end of this verse. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee when? This day. God's merciful, isn't he? He's gracious, isn't he? He's long-suffering, isn't he? He allowed Saul to sit on the throne however long. And listen to me, listen to me. When Saul went 180 degrees against God and delved into the demonic, evil, wicked spirit world that he delved in, God met him right there and said, I've done this today because of what you did. Because I love you, and because I'm going to give you one more chance. That's what it said. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. God said, Saul, I want you to know where you got off the path. I want you to know where our fellowship broke. I want you to know what the problem was. Then verse 19 is the sentence against him the next day. 
from the time Saul left this position to the time that he drew his last breath. Listen, he knew exactly the sin that he had to get right with God. And God gave him another day. Say, did he? I doubt it. But it's not up to me. And it's not up to you. It's up to him and God. I don't think he did. But it's really curious that Samuel said in verse 19, he said, And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be where? Now, I don't know. I don't know. But Luke 16 tells you this, that there's a rich man to lift up his eyes being in torments. And he was able to have a conversation with Abraham. We was in paradise. And Abraham said there's a what fixed between us. But they were able to communicate. Are they in the same general area? I don't know. But that's curious that Samuel said that. So said, tomorrow you're going to be with me. Now that could mean, maybe that means, I don't know, maybe that means Saul got right. I don't, I don't know. But it could also mean that if Saul lifted up his eyes being in torments, he could still be in the same general area. Okay, so anyway, that, that's, my, that's my unofficial <laughs> official answer. <laughs> I believe it was Samuel. I really do. And uh, Brother Sutek asked that question at the end of the Bible conference, or Bible Institute over there in Romania. How long ago was that, sweetie? Is that six years now? Five and a half years? How long ago was that? Put you on the spot. No, it was longer than that. Anyway, it was a while ago. And, uh, and that's, that's bothered me ever since then. So I'm, that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it, unless somebody changes me otherwise. All right. So listen, tonight, here, here's a message picking up where you left off. It doesn't matter what happened to Saul. It doesn't matter where Saul is for all of eternity. It doesn't matter. What matters is where will you and I be. What matters is what will you and I say when we stand before God. What matters is, has there been a hurdle come up in my life and your life that's caused us to turn to the right hand or the left or to go back on God? And if there is, I'm going to encourage you tonight, please, please, don't keep going back. Don't keep going right. Don't keep going left. Come right back to the point where you left off and get that right with God. And the, the, the trip forward will be so much better. But just like Saul, the warning is, if we don't get it right, things are going to get worse and worse. So let's not be like Saul. Amen. Let's get it right.